ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful speech is the book of allah وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and the best guidance we have is the guidance of the best of mankind prophet muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها and the worst of a fit a thing of a fair that those things we need in tension to this religion of ours وكل محدثه بدعه and everything we need in tension to this religion of ours is an innovation وكل بدعه ضلاله and every innovation is misguidance and it is stray وكل ضلاله في النار every going astray every misguidance is in the hellfire ثم اما بعد ما دي رجل ان سيستر ان اسلام امام البرهاري رحمه الله ان شرح السنه هي روت وعلم انه لا يدخل احد الجنه الا برحمه الله ولا يعذب الله احدا الا بقدر بقدر ذنوبه ولو عذب اهل السماوات والارض برهم وفاجرهم وفاجرهم عذبهم غير ظالم لهم لا يجوز ان يقال لله عز وجل انه ظالم وانما يظلم من ياخذ ما ليس له والله له الخلق والامر والخلق خلقه والدار داره لا يسال عما يفعل وهم يسالون ولا يقال لما وكيف ولا يدخل احد بين بين الله وبين خلقه Imam al-Barahari rahimahullah in Sharh al-Sunnah in a title he entered that no one will in a chapter he titled no one will enter jannah except by Allah's rahma by his mercy he said rahimahullah and you should know that none will enter paradise except by Allah's mercy and that Allah will only punish the sinner in proportion to his sins were Allah to punish the inhabitants of the heavens and the earth the righteous and the sinful he would have punished them without being unjust to them without doing any wrong to them it is not permissible to say regarding allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is unjust or that allah is unfair or that allah has done wrong or has oppressed you this is because the unjust is one who takes what does not belong to him and to allah belongs the creation and the commandment to allah belongs everything he created and the commandment that he laid down the creation and the abode are his he will be questioned for what he does the afwan he will not allah will not be questioned for what he does but the creation will be questioned so it should not be said why or how because none can interfere between allah and his creation This chapter when Imam Al-Burhani rahimahullah he wrote highlighting Allah's rahma being necessary to enter paradise it stands out to us that despite the good deeds we have 
We need Allah's mercy to enter Jannah. Shaykh Salih al Tawzan, Habibullah, he said, Jannah is expensive. It's exalted. Your deeds are not enough to get you there. You can maybe have enough money to buy the car you like or the home you like or whatever it may be, but you cannot buy Jannah just by your deeds. No matter how many you come with, even if you perform all the righteous deeds, your deeds would never match the blessings that Allah gave you. Allah said, وَإِن تَعُبُّ نِعَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَظُلُومِ الْكُفَّارِ Allah says, what means that if you were to count the blessings of Allah, you would never be able to enumerate them. Indeed, mankind is ever an extreme wrongdoer, a disbeliever, an extreme ingrate, denying Allah's blessings by disbelief or by disobeying Allah and His Messenger wasallam. So this Jannah, even if you did no haram, you did no sin, and you came to Allah with a lifetime of just doing good deed after good deed after good deed, and Allah punishes you, He would not be wronging you because the good deeds we do with no sin would never even come close to the blessings Allah has uh, given us. عن معاذ بن جبل رضي الله عنه قال كنت ردف أو رديف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم على حمار يقال له عفير فقال يا معاذ هل تدري ما حق الله على عباده وما حق العباد على الله قلت الله ورسوله أعلم فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فإن حق الله على العباد أن يعبدوه ولا يشرك به شيئا وإن حق العباد على الله أن لا يعذب من لا يشرك به شيئا فقال معاذ رضي الله عنه يا رسول الله أفلا أبشر به الناس فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تبشرهم فيتكلوا رواه البخاري Mu'adh radiallahu anhu, he said, I was riding as a companion with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu on a donkey whose name was Ufayr. And when we see these things, yani look at the details, the beauty of the hadith, of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu preservation. These details that you will never find in any other type of claimed religion or anything like that. That everything was specific and all of this was whether was tested to be sure that this was sahih or not. But in this authentic narration, as Ayyad Bukhari said, so I was his companion and I was on a donkey that's name was Ufayr. So the Prophet he asked me, Oh Mu'ad, do you know the right of Allah upon his slaves and do you know the right of the slaves upon Allah? So Mu'ad, he said, Allah and his messenger وسلم, know best. So Allah's Messenger وسلم, He said, as for the right of Allah upon his slave, is that they worship him and they do not commit shirk. They do not associate any partner in worship with Allah at all, whatsoever. That all the worship would be for Allah alone without any partners. And he said, as for the right of the slave over Allah, SubhanAllah, Allah gave us rights that we have over him is that if we worship him without committing shirk, then he will forgive you, he will not punish you with any punishment. Mu'ad heard this, what, what kind of great news is this? I gotta live my lifetime, do the best I can, just do not commit shirk, worship Allah, and then Allah, he won't punish me. So Mu'ad, he said, O Messenger of Allah, said, should I tell the people this? And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, do not tell them it lest they would depend on it absolutely. Lest they would just depend on this and not do any good deeds. Or not do anything, be careless with respect to their being, doing the major sins. So this hadith is not a green light to just say, okay, I'm not going to commit shirk, but I'm going to sin. But it shows the vastness of Allah's rahmah and mercy for the one who tries to stay firm on his tawheed. For various reasons, I've had to bring up some certain hadith to help show that even though life may be difficult, even though you might be struggling and sinning and disobeying Allah, feeling sinful, that the mercy of Allah is vast. كَتَبَ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ الرَّحْمَةِ He obliged upon himself that he be merciful. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the entirely merciful to all of creation. Even the disbeliever, even the corrupt one, even the bad one. And Ar-Rahim, especially merciful, 
specifically for those who believe in Allah and do not associate partners with Him in worship. So we should strive hard to no longer alive, to no longer alive, to get to that prize of Jannah, to see the face of our Lord. Look at some of these ahadith that were related in the Sunnah, the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال رجل, قال رجل لم يعمل خيرا قط فإذا مات فحرقوه وذروا نصفه في البر ونصفه في البحر فوالله لئن قدر الله عليه ليعذبنه عذابا لا يعذبه, لا يعذبه أحدا من العالمين فأمر الله البحر فجمع ما فيه وأمر البر فجمع ما فيه ثم قال لما فعلت قال من خشيتك وأنت أعلم فغفر له رواه البخاري رضي الله محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يسأل ما أفنتك حديثة there was a man who never did any good deeds and it was said that when he died his family should burn him and throw his ashes of his burnt body into the earth, half of it and the other half into the sea. By for, uh, for by Allah, if Allah would get a hold of him, he would inflict a punishment on him that he never inflicted upon any other person from amongst the people. But Allah, he ordered the sea to collect his ashes, and he ordered the earth to collect his ashes. And Allah brought him back together, recreated. And he asked him, why did you do such a thing? The man replied, because I was afraid of you. And you know it very well that I feared your punishment. So Allah forgave him. Allah forgave him. We have a Lord who loves to forgive if you're sincere in your repentance. And you believe and you do righteous deeds. In a similar narration, Abu Sa'id radiallahu anhu, he narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, أن رجلا كان قبلكم رغصه الله مانا فقال لبنيه لما لما حضر أي أب كنت لكم قال خير أب قال فإني لم أعمل خيرا قط فإذا مت فإذا مت فأحرقوني ثم ثم سحقوني ثم ذروني في اليوم في في يوم عاسف ففعلوا فجمع الله عز وجل فقال ما حملك قال مخافتك مخافتك فتلقاه برحمته رواه البخاري in a similar narration the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said amongst the men amongst the people preceding your age there was a man whom Allah gave a lot of money while he was on his deathbed he asked his sons and said, what type of father have I been to you? They said, you have been a good father to us. He said, I have done no good deeds. So when I die, burn me and crush my body, scatter my ashes across the sea on a windy day. This is how much, not just throw it all in one place in the ocean, but on a windy day, so my ashes would be far and far apart. So his sons did as he wished. This is not legislated in Islam, to be clear. Cremation, as you see some of the people doing, it's not allowed in Islam. We're not allowed to do it. So this was from the stories of the people before the Messenger of Allah sallallahu So his sons did accordingly, but Allah, He gathered their, His particles, His ashes, and said, what made you do such a thing? To have your body cut and crushed and then spread all over on a windy day. He replied, because of fear of you, fearing your punishment. So Allah bestowed His mercy upon him. Allah forgave him. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول كان رجلان في بني إسرائيل متاخيين فكان أحدهما يذنب والآخر مجتهد في العبادة فكان لا يزال المجتهد يرى الآخر على الذنب فيقول أقصر فوجده يوما على ذنب فقال له أقصر فقال خلني وربي أبعثت علي رقيبا فقال والله لا يغفر الله لك أو لا يدخلق الله الجنة فقبض أرواحهما فاجتمع عند رب العالمين فقال لهذا المجتهد أكنت بي عالما أو كنت على ما في يدي قادرا 
فقال للمذنب أذهب فأدخل الجنة برحمتي وقال للآخر أذهب به إلى النار. This hadith which is in the Sunnah of Abi Dawood I mean is graded as sahih and authentic. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, was heard to be saying that there were two men from Bani Israel striving for the same goal. One of them would commit sin and the other would strive his best to do, to do his best in this world in the way of ibadah. So the man who would exert himself in worship, he continued to see the other one sinning. He would say, Aqsir, hold back, man. Stop sinning. Re- repress your sin. Refrain from it. Until one day he saw this same man sin again and again. And he told him, Aqsir, refrain from your sin. The man said to him, leave me alone. Leave me to my Lord. Leave me and my Lord alone. I, I, mean, I will deal with it myself. Have you been sent as a watchman over me? So this man who was going out in the way of ibadah, he said, I swear by Allah, Allah will not forgive you and Allah will not let you enter Jannah. He will not admit you to his paradise. So then their souls were taken by Allah and they met together with the Lord of the world. And Allah Azza wa He said to the man who strived and worshipped, who was working mujtahad fi ibadah, he was in the way of his ibadah, striving and struggling to worship his Lord. He said to him, Did you have knowledge of me or about me? Have you power over that which is in my hand? He said to the man who sinned, Go and enter my paradise by my mercy. And he said to the other, Take him to hell. Abu Huraira, he said, By him in whose hand is my soul, he spoke a word by which this world and the next world of his were destroyed. Never despair. Never despair for the mercy of Allah. If you or someone you love is sinning, do not look down upon them or condemn them. Call them to what is good in a kind and gentle way. Help them avoid that sin if you are capable of doing so. And never give up for muqallab al the turner of the hearts, can change the hearts at any time. We often think that a sinner may be so bad, that this person is to be looked down upon, that he will not be forgiven, that he should be condemned we automatically think they're inferior if we're not doing the same sin. It's a sign of iman or faith to hate sin. But Allah may guide that sinner to the straight path before his death and cause him to rectify himself. Some are arrogant. They consider themselves better than others. Even though the Prophet ﷺ, he warned us of this kibr. لَمَّا قَالْ مَنْ كَانَ فِي قَلْبِهِ ذَرَّةٍ that the person who has an Adam's weight, a mustard seed of arrogance in his heart, he will not smell from the fragrances of paradise. But it's a strange thing that someone who is pious and fearing Allah, knows Allah, knows that He is merciful and able to change the hearts, that He would do such a thing and look down upon another person. Yes, we were commanded to enjoin the good and to forbid the evil. This is obligatory on us. But we see how a pious person can ruin himself with one word or one phrase. Making a statement that puts you in the level almost with Allah and your, yani by just your words. But you don't notice it. So fear Allah with respect to that. This pious one disgraced the sinner. He made him despair of Allah's mercy. He made him feel like Allah wouldn't be there to forgive him or have mercy upon him. And by this, he took a position of something that only Allah knows and only Allah is capable of doing. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَهُوَ اللَّهِ الَّذِي لَا إِلَهَ غَيْرُهُ إِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ لِيَعْمَلْ بِعَمَلْ أَهْلَ الْجَنَّةِ حَتَّى مَا يَكُونُ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهَا إِلَّا ذِرَاعُ وَيُسْبِقْ عَلَيْهِ الْكِتَابُ وَيَعْمَلْ بِعَمَلْ أَهْلَ الْجَنَّ ليعمل بعمل أهل النار حتى ما يكون يكون بينها وبينها إلا ذراع فيسبق عليه الكتاب ليعمل بعمل أهل الجنة فيدخلها. We have an authentic hadith of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم that we find in Sahih Bukhari Muslim that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said I swear by Allah other than whom there is no God there is no one worthy of worship. Certainly one of you will do and perform the deeds of the people of paradise. You'll be a person who does good deeds as it appears to the people. 
They see the person praying and fasting and giving charity and doing good deeds. Doing the deeds of the people of paradise until there's good not between him and paradise except an arm's length. And then what Allah has recorded will be decreed and take over. And he will perform the deeds of the people of hellfire so he will enter the hellfire. And certainly there are those who will definitely perform the acts of the people of the hellfire. They will do sin and do evil until there's not between him and the hellfire except a hand's length, an arm's length. Then what has been reported will overtake him. He will do the actions of the people of paradise so he will enter it. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, it may appear that some are doing good and you think this one will go to Jannah. Some are doing evil, you think that you want to the hellfire. But it's not what you perceive. Allah has something written for them that you may not know. And always remember this hadith to keep striving to do good and avoid sin so you die upon that. The bottom line is to fear Allah. Fear Allah at every instance. Have a stress on Tawheed. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he was in Mecca for 10 years after the revelation of Islam only calling to Tawheed before Salah came down. Before the Salah was legislated, 10 years he was calling to Tawheed. And then that salah was for about three years through the migration to Medina before zakat and siyam and hajj and all those other things were legislated. Ten years just focusing on the oneness of Allah so that you will live a life and the people will live a life staying away from shirk. So stress tawheed. Do not despair for Allah's mercy. Pray for guidance when you read it. Have it, say it with conviction. Pleading and begging your Lord to keep you on this straight path. Hold on to your tongues from swearing and decreeing what only Allah has the right to decree or to say. Repent to Allah with everything. The Prophet he said, the one who repents from a sin sincerely, it's like he did not do the sin. And hope for Allah's mercy. Ask Allah for His mercy. Yet at the same time fear His punishment. Fear that fire that could be your abode. If you die upon shirk or upon major sins. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, fear Allah and balance it with hoping for His mercy. But never despair at the mercy of Allah. Never think you're upon so much sin that Allah cannot forgive you. Or that Allah cannot show you His mercy. For those who may not be doing the sins you're witnessing your brothers or sisters doing, know that the tides could switch. That could be you. Know that the one you're looking at, Allah might say that he might be in a higher place or she might be in a higher place in Jannah than you will get to. Never be proud. Always push forward. Doing good deeds. Believing in that Tawheed first and foremost doing those righteous actions, begging Allah for His mercy, and fearing His punishment. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِ الَّذِينَ أَصْرَفُوا عَنَا أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَةٌ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَخْرَبُ بِنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah says what means, say, O ibadi, O my slaves, who have transgressed against themselves by committing evil deeds and sin, despair not at the mercy of Allah, verily Allah forgives all sins, Truly, He is oft forgiving, most merciful. These are the words of your Creator, the one in whose hand holds that mercy to get you to Jannah. So you can live there forever as an eternal abode. Allah says, O oh, you who believe. So this is where the 
one who wants to be a mu'min to Allah. Because we can't ascribe that to ourselves. Allah needs to write us as believers. The one who wants to be a believer to Allah, he should be all ears. When Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladina amin. I want to be a believer, so listen to this. Turn to Allah with a sincere repentance. Allah, by saying this, is acknowledging you're a sinner. And that is okay. If you turn to Him when you sin, that He will forgive you and have mercy on you. It may be that your Lord will remit you your sins and admit you into gardens under which rivers flow. يعني جنة. ثم قال الله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون. Allah says, what means, O you who believe, again, hear out. You want to be a believer, you want to be a mu'min. O you who believe, fear Allah. By doing what He commanded and what He ordered, abstaining from what He prohibited, upon tawheed. Upon tawheed. This has to be the foundation. You don't do nothing till that foundation is laid, or it means nothing. And as fear Allah, as He should be feared, Obey him and be thankful to him. Praise him. Alhamdulillah. Saying Alhamdulillah for everything Allah has decreed for you, whether you think it's good or bad. And do not die except in the state of Islam as Muslims. With complete submission to Allah. Submit your life to him. He's the one who gave it to you to test you and to try you. An Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna husnaf wan billah من حسن عبادة الله رواه الترمذي وهذا حديث حسن. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in the hadith which is acceptable. He said, indeed, having good thoughts concerning Allah is from the perfection of worship of Allah. Have good thoughts of your Lord. Never think He's not capable of forgiving you or showing you mercy that can turn you around. But you have to come for it. من آتاني نمشي آتيتم as he said in the Hadith Qudsi, who comes to me walking, I will come to him running. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Islam, we will end with this final Hadith from Suhaib. He narrated that Abu Hurairah anhu, and Abu Sabeed ibn Qudri radiallahu anhu, he said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ ثَلَاثَ مَرَّاتٍ ثُمَّ أَكَبَّ فَأَكَبَّ كُلُّ رَجْلٍ مِنَّا يَبْكِي لا ندري على ماذا حلف ثم رفع رأسه في وجه في وجه البشرة فكانت أحب إلينا من حمر النعم ثم قال ما من عبد يصلي الصلوات الخمس ويصوم رمضان ويخرج الزكاة ويجتنب الكبائر السبع إلا فت إلا فتحت له أبواب الجنة فقيل له فادخل بسلام. This hadith which is Hassan in the Sunnah al Nisa'i, the Prophet ﷺ, it was said that he addressed us one day and said, By the one in whose hand is my soul, and he swore this three times. By the one in whose hand is my soul, by the one in whose hand is my soul, and he lowered his head. And each of the companions lowered their heads and they were crying and weeping. And we did not know what he swore or took an oath about, but they feared it. And then he raised his head, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, with joy on his face. So the companions they saw this and they said it was dearer to us than the red camels. This made them relieved, as if they had been given everything in the world. Then he said, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, whoever offers the five daily prayers, this offering them means that you do them in their times and you take them seriously and you focus and you have humility and humbleness in them. Whoever offers those five daily prayers, and he fasts the Ramadan, and he pays his zakah on his wealth, and he avoids the seven major sins, from them shirk, associating partners with Allah, sihr, witchcraft, consuming the wealth of an orphan, killing an innocent soul, uh, consuming riba, interest and usury, what many of us have become so lazy about just because Oh, I'm living in a Catholic country, I can take riba and engage in riba interest and usury. Not to think this is from the majorest of sins. Fleeing from the battlefield and slandering the chaste woman, the chaste innocent woman, accusing her of, of being unchaste or immoral. Whoever offers their five daily prayers, fasts Ramadan, pays the cat, avoids the seven major sins, 
it will be that the gates of paradise will be open for him or her, and it will be sent to them. Enter it in peace and security. May Allah make us of those who enter Jannah in peace and security. Allahumma khalil al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat wa al-Mu'minin wa al-Mu'minat wa al-Ahiyyat wa al-Amwat wa al-Mu'minat wa al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat 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 w